Hey everyone, it's Michelle Caruana from Play Cafe Academy and I just want to quickly remind you to please subscribe to this channel. I put out a new video every single week and lately I've been doing a lot of tours and coaching calls on my channel. So this week I'm going to kind of go back to my more educational style. So if you like this, please leave a comment. I'd love to know. So an alternative title to this video could have been, do you ever sleep or Maybe even, how do you do it all? Because these are common questions I get all the time. And as I've mentioned in previous blogs and videos, life as a business owner looks significantly different from when we first opened our doors over four years ago. While I still retain some responsibilities, like communicating with party clients, there are many tasks I used to keep on my plate that I have since outsourced, like working parties and events. And there are some things I gave up altogether, like stalking the weather and worrying about competition. However, one of the most common mistakes I see small business owners make, and especially local small business owners, is hoarding all of the tasks for, them, for their business themselves. This mistake is usually born from good intentions. The business owner wants everything to be done exactly the right way. However, a major lie that we tell ourselves as business owners is that we are the only people who can accomplish these tasks or at least accomplish them as good as we expect them to be done. Not only is it untrue that others can not do these tasks, but they can often do them even better than us. I know. This was a very hard pill to swallow for me as a business owner and a recovering control freak, but it honestly could not be more true. Other employees have different experiences and different perspectives than us, and they can offer fresh insight into our processes and workflows that not only improve them and make them more efficient, but can actually make the business run better overall and improve profits, which let's be honest, we care a lot about. It wasn't until I unexpectedly got pregnant with my second child during our first year in business and really had to take a hard step back after giving birth, thanks to an emergency C-section, that I started to surrender some of the processes that I was holding on to. I will never forget lying in a hospital bed, having just given birth 10 days early, panicking that no one would be able to shop for party supplies or place food orders or work the parties or write the schedule for the next week since I was obviously out of commission. I didn't even bring my computer to the hospital. Like most business owners, I was well-meaning. I wanted my birthday party clients to be honored and taken care of. and. I was just convinced that I was the only person who would be able to deliver a stellar customer service up to my standards. However, here is the magical thing. Everyone figured it out and everything got done without me. Luckily, I had taken notes and documented what needed to be ordered just in case and all of the parties went off without a hitch. Our supervisor at the time wrote the schedule for the following week, which happened to be winter break week, one of our busiest of the year. and. She did an even better job than I possibly could have. And I have to be honest here, I should have been elated and relieved, but in that moment, I was actually a little bummed. My business didn't need me as much as I had previously thought and maybe even hoped, and my skills weren't as special as I had assumed, and other people on my team were able to accomplish everything that needed to be done even better than I would have been able to do. So. After I got over that initial disappointment, I started surrendering a bit more and delegating more and more tasks because I did have a newborn after all, and I monitored the effects on my business, and I was quite honestly amazed. Everything was running smoothly. If anyone had any questions whatsoever, they were answered by our supervisor, and I was able to really rest at home with my newborn, completing only the tasks that I could do from home during nap time because I had a toddler too. I started becoming more addicted to that freedom that delegation gave me and eventually made a few more hires to my team and offloaded even more of my task list. I was finally free to do what I did best, which in my specific case was marketing and innovating new revenue streams. And the best part is I was able to do it with a mind that wasn't cluttered with a million other tasks. So I was much more creative and I accomplished much more in these categories than I would have been able to do otherwise. Not only did I enjoy my day-to-day -day more because I was operating in my genius zone, a Michael Hyatt term, and I was working on only things I enjoyed, but our profits actually increased. When I was delegating more, I fully expected our profits to decrease since our payroll hours skyrocketed, but 
I would have honestly been okay with that because my priority was my new baby who was born with hip dysplasia and required daily doctor's appointments. However, the opposite turned out to be true. My team was filling all of their hours now with work instead of just sitting around, which just realistically happens sometimes if it's slow and there are no customers to serve. And since I was more creative and had more time to innovate and create new revenue streams, our revenue actually went up more than the increase in payroll expenditure, that's for sure. And all of this happened while I was working about 10 hours a week compared to my previous 40 or 50 hours a week. Unfortunately though, most business owners never have a traumatic experience like an emergency C-section to snap them out of their old ways like I had and never come to this realization and never really feel that freedom. Therefore, their business will always be limited by their ability to work. They're simply trading time for dollars because their business revenue is completely dependent on the amount of time that they're able to put in themselves. And when they stop or take a vacation or get sick or go on maternity leave, their business and sales stop as well. Like myself, they probably get a lot of comments like, when do you sleep or how do you do it? And my answer used to be, well, I don't sleep. But my answer now is that I have an incredible team behind me who makes it all possible. So if you're a small business owner, I'd really like to challenge you to start keeping track of all the tasks you complete each week and pay especially close attention to tasks that are repetitive and also tasks that don't bring you any joy. Examples might be writing the schedule, going to the post office, ordering food, things like that. Even things that take just five minutes add up over time. So don't let the time that it might take to train someone else on a quick five minute task deter you from offloading even those small line items because it really does add up. I've seen that now. I then challenge you to choose one task to take off your plate this week, and then another the next, and then another the next. Soon you'll find yourself with more time, more happiness, and yes, even more profits. I would love to hear about what you're delegating, so please leave me a comment and let me know. And even if you're not a small business owner yet, even if you're still in the research phases or you're just gathering ideas, ask for help. If you're researching prices, ask a family member or a spouse to pick up the phone and take some notes. A lot of people are probably willing to help, you might just not be asking. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an employee, it could be hiring, hiring a childcare provider so you can write your business plan. There are so many different ways that you can delegate. It might be ordering groceries or having your house clean so that you can have more time to focus on what needs to be done to move you forward. So I really wanna challenge you to do those things and please leave me a comment um, and let me know if you like this video because I will create more of them. And also let me know what you think of this delegation concept and if you're gonna be implementing it in your business. Have a great day, guys. I will see you next week.